Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lars Schall. I am an independent financial journalist from Germany. And I am now connected with Bill Holter, who works for Miles Franklin, a precious metals investment firm in the United States. Hi, Bill. How are you? Good. How are you, Lars? I'm doing very well. Bill, I know that you follow the gold market for many, many years. So tell us, please, the following. Namely, what is the main driver of the price of gold? Well, the, the main driver should be just pure supply and demand, as in all normal markets. But uh, markets are not normal. Uh, we know that interest rates are set, rigged. We saw the LIBOR scandal. Uh, we know that currency markets are, are manipulated by central banks. Uh, it's been a race to the bottom for currencies. Everybody wants a weak currency. We know the equity markets uh, here in the U.S. since 1988 have had the support of the uh, president's working group on financial markets. Basically, uh, the slang for that is the plunge protection team. And in the gold market, uh, yes, you have physical supply and demand, but we also have uh, at least 100 paper ounces of futures contracts for every one real ounce of gold. And the price has been suppressed. Uh, there's been, in other words, there's been supply of 100 non-real ounces to hit the market for every one real ounce that exists. And from a day-to-day -day standpoint, the price is basically made in New York and made in London, uh, and it's done with, with paper contracts, not the real metal itself. Yes. Uh, now, you assume that the gold market is rigged. What does this mean for the way how you analyze this market and invest in it? Well, like I said, you can't really uh, analyze it day to day because you never know when, uh, for instance, last April, uh, half of the world's gold production was sold in 36 hours via paper contracts. So you can't control or know Uh, when these paper contracts are going to hit the market. But the one thing you do know is that the price of gold is artificially underpriced by orders of magnitude. And I think the best way to analyze it is just buy the physical metal and sit and wait. Uh, I, I forget who, who made this quote, but they said, uh, you don't wait to buy gold, you buy gold and wait. Yeah. And what you're waiting for is a true market price, which I believe is going to be multiples, multiples higher than where it is right now. And why so? Well, as I just mentioned, there's there's been a, at least a hundred uh, paper ounces that are not real ounces of gold that have been sold onto the marketplace. So... That has, has depressed the price, and basically what that means is owners of gold or people who think that they own gold via ETFs or, or contracts or what have you, that gold does not even exist. So yeah. once, the, once you get to the point where, where this is uh, mainstream and people realize that they don't own gold, everybody's going to scramble for the real thing. The only problem is there's not enough of it around. 99 out of 100 uh, investors don't really own gold. And that's going to be unbelievable demand for a very finite product. Yes, and so you would say uh, only go for the physical thing. Well, if, yes, if you're, if you're looking at bullion, you, you buy the physical metal, You have it delivered, and if you want to vault it in a non-bank institution, that's fine. You're putting it in there with your own hands, uh, but you actually touched the real metal. I am also an advocate uh, of having some capital in the mining share area uh, simply because when all is said and done and gold gets remarked up in price, uh, Gold is going to have to 
there's going to have to be some sort of either gold backing or gold ratio for the new currencies that are, are going to come into existence, which will make these mining companies, if you want to call them the foundation or the new central banks or, or what have you, uh, I think you there is very huge wealth to be made in the, the, the mining industry. Yeah. Uh, why is the rigging of the gold price a non-issue for the mining industry? Why is it a non-issue? Yeah, they don't talk about it. The only one who really talks about it on a regular basis is Jim Sinclair, as far as I am aware of it. Okay, okay I understand. Uh, I guess the, the best way to explain it is you have to understand that the mining industry is very capital intensive. It takes huge sums of capital uh, to explore, and especially once you go to build the mine and operate a mine. And where does that capital come from? Generally, it comes from the banking industry. So if you had the, the president of Newman or, or Gold Corp or, or Barrick or, or what have you uh, questioning the validity or fairness of the gold market, they would be shut off from the banks. Their, their capital would be shut off. And they'd have a problem... Uh, with their day-to-day -day business. They, I mean, they wouldn't have, have money to operate or to build new mines. So I think the, the, the mining industry, although they should have said something and they should have said something collectively 15 years ago, they're afraid. And they've said nothing because they rely too heavily on capital from the banking industry. Yeah. Uh, one big story these days in the gold market is the story uh, surrounding the German gold reserves held abroad. What are your thoughts on this issue? Well, we've heard from Germany uh, four times, I guess five times now already since the beginning of the year. <clears throat> We, uh, I guess it was back on January 5th. Uh, Germany announced that they had received 37.5 tons from the U.S. and and they did not at the at that time they didn't say anything at all about uh, any gold from Paris. Yeah. And back then they originally said that this gold was re-refined in New York into LGD bars, London Good Delivery bars. And a week later, they turned around and, and they said, oh, no, no, it wasn't re-refined in, in the U.S. It was, we refined it here in Germany. So right there, they've contradicted themselves. And you know that, that one of those two statements cannot, by, by definition, be correct. Yes. Uh, now, since then, we've found out that 32.5 of the 37.5 tons came from France, and only five tons came from the U.S. Now, the run rate, if you, if you take the 300 tons and you divide that by uh, seven or eight years, it should be 35 to 40 tons per year coming from the U.S., and we only sent them five. So the German government, the German people, they should be screaming at the top of their lungs, Where's our gold? And I, I guess there's starting to become a uh, it's it's starting to become an issue, but it's the volume is still low on that. Yeah. Uh, what do you think happened with the German gold? Uh, it's hard to say. It could have been leased out. It could have been sold already. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that something happened to it. Uh, what exactly? I don't know. It really doesn't matter because the U.S., the, the New York Fed was in charge of safekeeping the gold, which means the gold should never have moved, never been touched, never been changed in form or anything. But something has happened because they should have gotten close to 40 tons just from the New York Fed alone, and they only got five. Yeah. Um, I just on the off the top of my head, uh, 
this morning I wrote a piece to put that five tons of gold in perspective. Let's say that it's worth uh, 200, 250 million dollars. Back in 2008, the Fed lent out $17 trillion to banks and financial institutions across the globe. And they did that in a very short time frame. It was done within a month or maybe two months. And more than half of it went to foreign institutions. To put it in perspective, the $250 million worth of gold that we sent, and it's taken us a year to do, versus that $17 trillion, it's 68 million times the amount of gold that we sent. We sent in cyber credits out of thin air. I just thought that was an interesting uh, analogy or comparison that uh, you know we could send 68 million times as much dollar credits as we could gold in far less time. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Deutsche Bundesbank did not receive the original bars from the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, is this a problem? Well, I mean, they received some gold, right? So, right. They, they yeah. received gold. Um, let me explain that, that gold has a fingerprint. Uh, back in 1989, 1990, when the Soviet Union collapsed, I knew about six months prior to their collapse that something was happening, something bad was happening, because gold was showing up on the, on the world markets with the czar's stamp on it, meaning it was gold that had been fabricated in 1917 or earlier. So Russia was down or the Soviet Union was down to the bottom of the barrel. Uh, if, if gold shows up, it's uh, 90 or 91 percent pure, then you, you can sort of guess that it's U.S. coin mill because that's, what the, that's the purity. If it's 99.999, fine, then the fingerprints are erased. The other thing is, uh, with that other... If it's 90% gold and 10% something else, if you can figure out what that something else is, that will also give you a clue as to where the gold came from. So, so Germany now has 99.999 fine London good delivery bars, but there's no fingerprint to it, and there's no way to find out where it came from. Yeah. Do you think that the Deutsche Bundesbank should uh, publish the list of the bars and the numbers? Well, of course they could, or they should, but it's not going to do any good now because they've already been refabricated. The fingerprints are gone. What the Bundesbank should do is show bills of lading uh, and how this gold actually went from New York to Frankfurt You know, what, uh, it, it, it's got to take dump trucks, uh, armored cars, security guards. There have to be signatures. There have to be bills of lading. There have to be receipts. There have to, has to be a paper trail. Let's see the paper trail. That's what they should publish. Yeah. Um, another big story in the gold market are the massive purchases of gold by China. And what are your thoughts on this? Well, China is, over the last two years, uh, China has imported over a thousand tons through Shanghai per year. The world, if you take away Russia and China's production, because whatever they produce, they never export, the world produces only 2,200 tons per year. So China is gobbling up one of every two ounces that has been produced in the last two years. And I just recently saw a story that China may announce that they have 2,700 tons of official gold. Well, that has to be wrong because we know in the last two years they've imported more, well more than 2,000 tons. And they said that they had, what, 1,054 tons back in 2009. So there's 3,000 tons that you can put your finger on at least, plus their own production. 
I mean, they've got to be 5,000, 8,000, maybe even 10,000 tons. Uh, but, but China is a buyer. And they're buying more than half the world's production. Yet the price has gone down. That does not add up. Yep. Uh, one final question. What are your overall expectations for the gold market in 2014? <laughs> Well, I suspect something's going to break because, as I said, the stories are not adding up. I mean, you can look at uh, here in the U.S., you can look at the inflation numbers, and we know just living here, your cost of living is going up far more than 2%. The unemployment numbers, they're, they're recalculating them. They've changed the way they calculate them. Uh, it, the, the unemployment rate, should probably be 11% or higher. John Williams calculates the unemployment rate back the way they did in the 1970s to be close to 22%. What I'm getting at is the lies are compounding and reality, I think, in 2014 is going to break through. And when reality break through, breaks through, you, you'll probably see the gold market blow up when I say blow up, uh, we'll have a fail to, to deliver. Uh, you're probably going to see the derivatives markets blow up. And my personal opinion is that we're going to have a bank holiday, some type of financial holiday, where we have a reset or repricing of assets. On the other side of that, pick a number. I have no idea what it, what it could be. It could be 5,000, 10,000. 50,000, uh, I mean, we've seen and heard all these numbers thrown out there, but it's going to be multiples higher. What that number is, you can't really calculate because you don't really know how much gold the U.S. has, and you don't really know how much money supply is out there, nor do we know how much more money supply is going to be created. So I think you're going to see much, much higher prices. Um, as a side note, I think whatever gold does to the upside, you're going to see silver do at least two to three times, probably four times to the upside to get back to the historical ratio of 15 to one. Yep. So I'm much more bullish on silver than I am on gold. Me too. <laughs> okay, Bill, I thank you for this conversation. It was my pleasure. Okay, thank you very much.